It's Halloween, so I thought it would be a great time to discuss the sample distance of volumetric lights. Volumetric lights go great with Halloween because you get those nice ethereal light rays. You can even add noise and get a real ghoulish quality. In fact, it's such an obvious connection that the help uses this exact same example for the sample distance of volumetric lights. But I am going to save you the read. You can find the pumpkin for Halloween, our pre-carved jack-o'-lantern here in the broadcast preset library under 3d object celebration looks like the name is misspelled pumpin so uh you'll want to look for it either by the name halloween or go directly to it in the folder structure so once i have my halloween pumpkin i'm going to just drop a light inside and we're going to make it a volumetric light the visible light option here will just make the light simply visible and it won't actually take into account the geometry and cast the volumetric shadowing. So you definitely want to use the volumetric option. And then you'll jump into the visibility tab for all of the very important visibility parameters. And the most important of those is the sample distance. Now, I've already reduced it here to one, but it defaults to 25 centimeters. And you can see that that just creates an ugly artifacted mess. You might have seen this before if you've tried to use a volumetric light. The sample distance is very dependent on the size of your objects and lights. So when you start to see artifacts, you just know that you need to reduce that value. And the smaller values are going to give you a more refined sampling, but they're also going to take progressively longer to render because it's having to actually calculate more samples. Let's take a look at how this works in a number of renders that I created previously. So here we have a sample distance of 50 and you can see that that's completely unusable when we drop down to 10 it's still completely unusable down at five still unusable once we get down to two it starts to get close but you can still see a lot of jaggedness in the volumetric calculation you can see that as we've increased the numbers we've gone from 19 seconds to 23 seconds and then once we get down to one we get a fairly usable result and we're at 30 seconds. If we drop that down to 0.5, we go to 44 seconds and it gets just a little bit cleaner. You can especially see here the jaggedness in the uh, volumetric ray right there. So that's the way it works with the standard renderer. The physical engine samples volumetric lights a little bit differently. And so rather than getting the big black artifacts, you really just get more noise. So here again at 50, it's not as unusable as the standard 50, uh, but it's still very noisy. You can see here that we're at a render time of 37 seconds. When I drop down to 10, it gets better. We've increased the render time by four seconds. And then when we drop down to one, we get a really usable result, but you can see that our render time has ballooned up to two minutes and 26 seconds. So you do start to pay a penalty for the volumetric lighting. Now you might think that you could simply scale your scene and use a larger sampling distance, but you can't outsmart Cinema 4D that way. The thing is, is that your light cone is increasing in size as well. So here's our standard render at a sampling distance of 0.5. I scaled the entire scene and the sampling distance by 100 so that the pumpkin was 100 times bigger and the sampling distance was 50. And you can see that the result is pretty much the same, but also so is the render time. So when you start seeing those artifacts, there's really no way around it. You're simply going to have to lower the sampling distance and wait for the render. While you're rendering, you can hand out some treats. And check out more tips and tricks on Cineversity.com.